Hello, welcome back to my dumb little tutorial series where I teach you how to make Hell My Neighbor fan games. Or at least, with my template, at least. Now before I get started, I would like to remind you that this series is meant for people who already have a basic understanding of how Unreal Engine works. If this does not apply to you, then this tutorial series is not for you. Alright, now let us continue. And so in this episode, I will be teaching you how to make Windows. So create a new blueprint class and make it an actor class. Call it a BP underscore window. And once you have have that opened up, create a new static mesh component. Uh, you can just leave it as static mesh. And make the static mesh window, just plain window. If you wanted if you wanted a smaller window, you'd use a window small which is this this mesh right here, but for now we'll just be using the regular window mesh. And before I continue, we have to make sure that we have the Apex Destruction plugin enabled, because otherwise this will not work. Now create a new destructible mesh component, you can call it glass, or really whatever you want it. Alright, and once you have that in, you'll want to uh, go into your meshes folder and search for window. And you'll want to use this window part mesh. This is, actu is actually what is used for the for the glass, and I know it is really freaking big. Uh, I, I, I don't know why Blender does this, but I, when I imported it, it just is really big for some reason. So, uh, yeah. And so... You'll want to right-click on that, and click Create Destruct Destructible Mesh. i sorry, I couldn't speak. <laughs> and once you have that created, turn up the cell site count to uh, something like 80 or something. This will actually determine how many uh, pieces this will uh, fracture into. And uh, depending on, on how good your computer is, uh, you can set it to like a thousand or something, but honestly, my computer can't handle that, so I'll just leave it at 80. And then after, once you set the cell site count, click Fracture Mesh. And there you go, it's uh, all, fractured, all fractured for you. After you're doing this, you'll want to scroll down to uh, Effects, Fracture Effects, and then for one, one, because this is when it is in its broken state, you'll want to set the sound to window... Uh... Glass? Yep! Glass break Q. This is the... Glass breaking sound, so... This is what will be what it'll be playing once you once uh, the, it has entered its broken state. So once you have that, well, you can close the window and set the destructible mesh in the window blueprint to the window part underscore dm. Now it may not show up in your blueprint at first. So just compile and save, and basically just keep opening and closing the uh, <laughs> the uh, blueprint, and just hoping that it'll that it'll show up. Like, see, there it is. Now you'll have to uh, scale this down quite a bit until it's about there, so it so it actually fills it up correctly. Now, once you have once you have this, we can actually get to the blueprinting. But before we do that, this is very important. You have to go into the collision tab or section or whatever, and check simulation generates hit events. This will actually allow the the uh, event hit triggers to actually like you know trigger once something has hit the glass. If you don't have this checked, nothing will work. All right. So once you have that, make sure you have the glass selected. Right click and search for event on component add on component hit. This one. For the other actor, this will be for uh, the actor that that actually hits the component, and make it BP underscore interactable. This will make sure that only uh, thrown objects will be able to hit gl the glass. And drag off as BP interactable. And search for get velocity. 
Then once you have that, drag off of here and do uh, vector length. Then once you have this, drag off of here and do greater than or equal to. Uh, I don't know why, but the but like the the value the value here uh like varies from project to pro from project version or engine version or whatever for some reason. So uh, to test this, let's do it in a BP box. Eight string. Get velocity vector length. There we go. I'll save. And now, let us test it. You can see it, but that actually scared the living crap out of me. I forgot that I implemented this guy. Let's just delete him. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So as you can see, it is now printing the current velocity. So, and as once I throw it... Okay, so it seems that that the velocity it gets set to is about seven or eight hundred. Let's do, let's set this to uh, seven hundred, just in case it doesn't get to exactly eight hundred or even below it. All right, now we can, uh, now we can delete this and close that, that, because we don't need it anymore. And now once we have this, we'll drag off of here, branch, and then, this is where we actually get to get to actually making it break the glass. So drag the component into here, drag off of here, and search for apply damage. Connect this to the true. And before I go further, I would just like to clarify what the exact what exactly this is doing. So this is getting the velocity of BP interactable along with any child blueprint actor that is a deriving from BP Interactable, and is getting the vector length of the velocity and checking if it is, if it, it is above or equal to 700. If this is above 700, it will, it will, do, it will trigger this apply damage node and break the uh, destructible mesh. Alright, we'll set the damage amount to 1, or uh, 1, because we actually wanted to apply, like, da you know, damage so that it actually, like, you know, breaks. And for the hit location, we'll uh, go back over here off of the hit result, do the break hit result, and then for the, uh, hmm, I don't think it really matters, we'll just, we'll just use location for the hit location and the impulse direction being the normal impu impulse, and for the impulse strength we'll just do one, it, I don't think it really matters. Alright, and once we have all of that, we can now test it. We'll just drag this into here. And go over here. Wait, what the? Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me just drag this uh, off <laughs> over to here and see if this is actually like triggering. Because if it is, then. Okay, so it seems that I set this too high. I might be doing this for a little while, so I'll just cut to uh, when I actually have it working properly. Two thousand years later. All right, I have uh, come to the conclusion that two hundred actually works best in this scenario. For some reason, <laughs> I. Uh, I don't know exactly why the velocity is different, it's probably because I'm too close to it or something, but I don't know. But as you can see, I throw it, and it actually breaks the glass. So now I can go th I can go through it by crouching, by jump crouching, you know, all the good stuff. But you may be wondering, how do I make it disappear after a little bit of it breaking? Well, you could do that a number of different ways. Uh, the most common way would be going into the, uh, destructible mesh, uh, asset, and, uh, uh, checking debris timeout, and then enable debris, and then debris, and then setting the debris lifetime minimum, or 
or should I say maximum, to uh, about three seconds. This is like very hit or miss for me. Like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, if it doesn't work, then uh, yeah, as you can see, it's been way longer than three seconds and it just doesn't work for some reason. So uh, yeah, we'll just uh, undo all of this. Except for enable debris, I don't think we really need to disable that, but whatever. If this, if it, if that doesn't work for you, you can just uh, add a delay node here, and then use random integer in range, and then once you have that, just drag that into here. That will make it so uh, it chooses a random number from one to three for the delay. And then drag off of here and do destroy components. This is essentially doing the same thing as uh, the debris timeout thing. So uh, as you can see, if once I break it, it disappears after a little while. And you can do the, and, and uh, for the uh, for the small window, it's essentially just a duplicate of a BP window. Let's call it small, except the destructible mesh is of course the small window, but the glass is rotated 90 degrees and scaled it down a tiny bit. Except that you might you might have to have to scale it down or like change the locations a bit more. Because of just how <laughs> just how big it can be it can get. Alright. Alright. And as you can see with this one, it also works the exact same way. Alright, so yeah, so that's how you make a window. I uh I I hope this uh style of tutorial is way way easier to follow than my previous ones. <laughs> the only reason why I had them going so fast before was because they were very simple concepts that could easily be explained in a few minutes rather than a ten to fifteen minute video explaining very, very, very simple concepts. Especially if it's just a template. <laughs> All right, so I, so yeah, uh, if you if you want this style of tutorials for uh, for uh, the rest of the series, uh, just uh, like and leave a com comment down below. And if you aren't already subscribed, subscribed. I know how many of you aren't subscribed. Just look at these statistics. That, 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 that's just that's just insane to me. Just please, for the love, subscribe if you watch my content. Anyways, that's enough shilling for me, so, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.